Good morning and welcome to The Daily Show here on uh, Claret and Booze. My name is Gary and um, we've got a few things to discuss today. Firstly, where was Flynn Downs last night? And look, I'm not going to do a match review because that was done very well by Nick and John last night. Uh, but I want to discuss the unwritten rule of following West Ham. We all know what that is, right? And then finally, I, I, I touch on last night again, which is the return of Big Craig Dawson. I, 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 I loved it. I loved it. And I loved the reaction to, from the fans as well. But before I begin, um, please give this video a watch. And if you like it, uh, subscribe to our channel, Claret and Booze. Hit the bell notification icon and give us a like. Thank you very much. So on with the on with the show. The um, the mystery the mystery of why Flynn Downs uh, was only on the bench as an unused substitute last night. Um, it baffles me. It baffles me because when we look at the the game against Stoya Bucharest last week, he was outstanding. He got many people's man of the match. Now you want to build on that. You want to see him in the next European game, or at least in the next Premier League game. Um, one thing I didn't expect was to see him as an unused substitute. Now, I commented that if David Moyes didn't rate the guy, he wouldn't have got 90 minutes against uh, Stoy Bucharest last week. So so that's the first clue. That's the first clue, I think. Um, the second clue is, if you look at what, you know, the part that Antonio played last night, he didn't play a part. Um, Downs didn't play a part either. So... That can only lead me to conclude that he's been saved for Everton on Sunday. Now, in the words of my brother Nick, you know, he will eat his own fingers if Flynn Downs starts against Everton. But that's a typical over-the-top reaction from Nick, right? Uh, I, I'm going to I'm gonna remain optimistic, and I'm going to give David Moyes the benefit of the doubt on this one. But it's only the benefit of the doubt for a couple of days, because... He needs to start against Everton. This is a quality player who complements Declan Rice. We all know that, that, we've all seen it, most of us anyway, can see and appreciate there is a problem between Suchek and Declan Rice in central midfield. And if we're going to persevere with the 4-2-3-1 uh, formation in the Premier League, uh, and please God, don't go near that um, that, that wing-back system with no wing-backs, uh, then we need a, a, a steadying influence in midfield, you know, especially against Everton, who are going to have the the, the enormous Onana. Now, we're going to have our hands full against their midfield, right? So, um, so look, Dave, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt on this one. I was so disappointed not to see Flint down start last night, though. That is not what any of us expected. But he better play on Sunday. Otherwise, I'm going to start to think there's something up. Right, um, on to the next story. So, um, Silky Borg. Now, there's an unwritten rule of following West Ham, and that is you've got to sweat. Nothing is easy, right? We've got to make life difficult for ourselves at all times. And most importantly, the last 10 minutes of a game, you've got to be sitting on the edge of your seat. And that's exactly what went on last night, right? I was I was hiding behind a cushion on the sofa at one point. It was just it was it was debilitating, you know, so it's watching that last that last ten minutes. When they got their um their 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 second goal, I mean, we just parted like the Red Sea. I mean, not having the steady and influence of Declan Rice on there and put Thomas Suchek on there, who should have been, you know, the 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 the, the guy to break up playing midfield. But suddenly, Bowen lost the ball, Ben Rama dived in, and um, honestly, we, they just ran to the other end of the pitch unchallenged. Um, it took them two bites to get it in, which shows the sort of quality of opposition. But look, the, the thing that really bothers me about last night is that is that the complacency on show because our players were trying to do too much. I, I wouldn't expect, for instance, Corne to try and beat every player in the Everton team on Sunday. Not that he'll get a game, but I wouldn't expect him to do that. He was trying to beat every player in the in the uh, Silky Bug team last la, last night, as if he had some divine right or he was a lot better than them. They were all doing it, right? They were all doing it. They all didn't show any respect whatsoever and were complacent. Paqueta. He was awful. He was awful. Now, um, it, it, look, Paquette is a great player. Played in his right position. Hopefully, he'll come good. But he was awful last night. I don't want to underestimate the the difference that the pitch made. You know, because it definitely did. That plastic pitch was awful. But also, to compensate for that, you've got to wear, wear the right footwear, right? Now... The commentator said that Declan Rice came out in the second half with a different pair of boots on. He might have put some AstroTurf boots on. 
But no shit, really. You're playing on AstroTurf, basically, right? What, what, why didn't they get the footwear right? Look at Lanzini's penalty. He almost, he almost did a what, what a Beckham, and and his 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 foot just gave way as he planted it. And it actually, if you look in the slow motion replay, he took two touches. It was an illegal penalty. Um, but we were slipping all over the place all night. It was like an ice rink. Now. You know, credit to Silky Bog, they're, 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 they're using every everything to their advantage. And if you've got a plastic pitch, you would use it to your advantage. They watered it, they made it even slippier than it was already. Um, but they were fine. They could stand up. They had the right footwear on. Why didn't we, a Premier League outfit, do our homework and find out what we needed to wear on our feet? Because clearly, we had the wrong footwear on. Um you know, that aside, it seemed to take us by surprise that Silky Borg was zipping the, the ball around. I, I mean, uh, early on, that goal, the first goal we, we, we conceded, that was just due, due to some quick nifty passing and catching us out. And, uh, you know, Kara being caught out of position, Declan Rice being dragged across, etc. But, um, you know, it took us a while to get into the game and figure out that a quick passing game is what's suited to this pitch. We should have gone in knowing that in the first place, right? So we kind of, um, and as Declan Rice said after the game, he basically came out, he was very honest. He said, look, the, the, it was difficult on a plastic pitch, but we are professional footballers and we have to play in whatever conditions you expect us to play in. And um, and, and, and that's honest from Deck. Um, I, I imagine Moyes must have been bloody furious after that game. I mean, we very nearly gave it away, didn't we? We were one glove width away from conceding a second goal, a third goal, rather. It's diabolical. No way ever that it should have been so difficult. They're not a good team, as we showed in the first half when we went 3-1 up at a relative canter. If we had to come out with the same attitude in the second half, we'd have put that game to bed easily. But, as we know, as I said at the beginning, that is the unwritten rule of West Ham. We have to sweat. So look, sit back, sweat and enjoy it. One highlight for me last night, there weren't many, but one highlight was the fans' reaction to Big Craig Dawson's return. I thought this was fantastic. This is West Ham all over, right? The, the love of an underdog. I mean... You don't catch us very often singing Declan Rice's name because that's a bit too obvious, right? But we, we, you know, we, we, we love, um, we love a trier, which is why the Bowen song came out last year because we knew that he, that he was sort of the, the the year before last, if you remember, this is before all his England shenanigans. You know, um, uh, he was struggling to play ninety minutes, and then last season, he, he he hit the ground running, and the crowd got behind him all season long, and. I love that um, we're doing the same to Craig Dawson now. We all know the story behind Dawson, the way he wanted to leave for family reasons and everything else. But the best reaction in that sort of situation is to show the guy a lot of love, right? And we sang his name. There's a brilliant song that we've invented, um, you know, but we, we, sang, we sang his name and sang that song. It seemed like it went on for 90 minutes. Now, he, he must have absolutely loved that. And uh, talking about, you know, talking about Deck again afterwards, he said, oh, you know, what what were you pleased with? What, what went well tonight? And he said, oh, it's just great to see Big Dulce back and, uh, and and seeing him get a goal as well off his shoulder in typical Big Dulce style. You know, just, just, just payback. And it's such a feel-good factor when West Ham take a player like that under their wing. And look, I just hope he stays for the whole season um, and doesn't uh, leave us in January. But look, the fans can't do any more to convince him other than what they're doing at the moment he's absolutely idolised over there and I, I, I for one I, I, I love it I think it's brilliant that is what makes West Ham different to other clubs I doubt he's played at another club in the top flight that's taken to him like we have alright you found your home Dulce you should sort your you know sort your situation out and stay right <clears throat> so look that is me done now if you missed it last night, John and Nick went on and did a post-match review just by themselves. They were both in a tetchy mood, very combative. If you want to laugh and you want to you know want to see some decent some decent discussion about what actually went on last night, give that video a watch. There's a link to it in the end of this video. Uh, but in the meantime, you know that is me done. If you uh, enjoyed this video, please can you subscribe to the channel, Claret and Booze. Give us a like and hit the bell notification icon. Leave a comment because I read and respond to all the comments. Um, uh, really interested in your in, in in your views on this. So until next time, see you soon, and come on, you irons. <laughs>